Okay, so I'm taking off the rear clamshell or fiberglass tub. We're gonna have it stripped down and it be bare frame rails back here. What I'm doing is, I thought I was gonna cut all this stuff off, but uh, I realized I just started prying and this glue started, you can get a close up there. This glue started just coming up pretty easily. So, you know, I just kept picking away at it and uh, I'm gonna take the whole clamshell off with uh, try to be in one piece so that we can scan it and uh, make a, a frame back here for um, over fenders to lay on. Why are they called clamshells? Actually, that's probably not the right word. <laughs> I don't know. I just made that up. It's probably called the rear tub, like fiberglass tub. Clamshell. What is clamshell? I'm thinking of like a Ferrari when I think of clamshell. When you know the rear comes up and you see the engine in the back. We can make it clammy. Okay. Getting a Ferrari. <laughs> Let's go. Scanning the Corvette chassis. Scanning the rear for some suspension goodies and uh, whatever Josiah decides to make back here. I guess a radiator mount and uh, suspension and covers and pickup points for body panels. So yeah, just took that off. And uh, now we're left with a bare chassis. Hey everybody, welcome to today's episode. This one is gonna be one of my favorites and we get to do it nice and early on. This is the roll cage video. So normally, as you guys know from our channel, I normally build roll cages from scratch and I get them to fit super tight. But my friend Rob over at Cage Kits makes probably the only kit that I would ever buy because I can trust his fitment. Today is really simple. I'm just gonna be cleaning the ends of all the tubes because I'm gonna be TIG welding this roll cage. And with that, the prep is everything. Um, we're doing it for aesthetic reasons and just to get my hand back into it. Obviously, I design most of the time now, so it's nice to get back behind the torch. Um, and I just, it's something that I wanted to do to keep my skills sharp and make sure, you know, we get the respect of the shop that I once had when I was welding very often. So I'll show you guys a couple tricks um, on how to clean the ends of the tubes. A lot of people are just using their little bit of elbow grease in their hands to clean it, but I've found a couple of nifty ways to do it nice and quick. So I'll show you guys that. You guys can apply that to the cages that you install and it just makes things a little bit cleaner um, because the cages come with this uh, oily coating on them. The oily coating is, it does a lot. It keeps them from rusting for one um, and during storage for the DOM material but uh, it's not nice to TIG weld through, or MIG, you should be cleaning it for MIG welding as well. So when that's all done, the cage is gonna look really nice and the welds are gonna look even better. So let's get into it. So the one trick that I have is I take a hole saw like this and I take some Scotch-Brite like this. Basically, it's gonna be kind of hard to show you with one hand, but I make like a little flower with it like that. And then I, yeah, like I can't do this with one hand, but. Okay, so basically I make a little flower out of it and then I use these zip ties because I can easily break them by hand. And I just make a pocket in here. And basically for tubes that have bends on them like this, they're pretty hard to get on like a belt sander or to use a grinder and stuff. You don't want to make a mess of them. So you basically spin this on the end of the tube and it gives you a really nice finish. And I'll show you that. I'm just gonna stick my foot on it and There you go. A little unorthodox because I'm doing it with one hand, but basically you are able to polish the tube really nice, really fast. And this is gonna make it so the TIG welds are gonna look perfect with no um, debris or anything floating around in the puddles. Um, for the parts in the middle of the tubes, 
we do have like a grinder with a belt on it that you can kind of go all the way around. But for those spots, typically I will use just my hands and a scotch Bright pad. And you just do kind of a rotating action around it. But you can also do those parts um, after the fact when the tubes are going into the cage. Cage kits are really nice because they mark everywhere that the tubes are gonna go. So I'll give you an example of that on the main hoop. You can see where the half laterals and where the back stays are gonna go. You can see that there. It's got a nice etch. Uh, Rob's machine etches those on, so you have no chance of missing where the tubes are gonna be landing. That is a really important feature that he adds because if you have the tube up or down on a main hoop, that's kind of like leaning back in the Corvette. The main hoop is gonna be leaning back quite a bit. If that tube was off, up or down, it's gonna change the length or the distance from its point to the landing point, And then the whole cage can be thrown off if you get that in the wrong spot. So looking at the cage, all the tubes that I'm gonna be cleaning, we've got a box filled with our little door bar tubes. Um, we've got our half laterals here on the floor. You can see they have compound bends in them, meaning the bends are not in line. And then we just have a nice curved harness bar. It's perfect for me because I'm really tall. Um, so I'm gonna have really good clearance in this chassis with Rob's cage. And then we have our door bars and we have our backstays. Backstays are gonna be what supports the main hoop from collapsing. The half laterals are the ones that run along the A-pillar. Door bars go on the doors. Harness bar goes behind the driver, and then we have the forehead bar to go in. It's a six point roll cage plus some intrusion bars. So I'm just gonna get to cleaning. <laughs> uh, so we're gonna put the bottom edge right to the bottom of this ridge here. Just about there, and that's gonna give us our reference for both sides. Then we're going to set in our main hoop and start connecting some tubes. So I'm using the lower door bar to determine the point-to-point -point reference. So I just line it up with the notches that are laser etched right there. And the front has them as well. Um, our half lateral, our main hoop, and our door bars are relatively in the right position. What I'm going to be doing is putting these pieces together while floating on top of the base plates, so I'm not gonna tack them to the base plates. But when I have my triangulated cockpit section, I will be able to position the car center front to back and center side to side. Then I can tack it to the base plates. So we're doing it this way first, just to make sure that we get the fitment perfect. Um, and I would encourage you to do it the exact same way. Excited to see about this cage. I haven't done it in several years. Several years being like two. And 
then the last cages that we were doing, they were MIG welded anyways. So I've taken the opportunity to go back to the craft that I mastered a while ago and do it on my own car now that I'm not gonna say I have more time, but I can make an excuse to put this kind of time into my new car. So I've been looking forward to doing this and I'm having fun doing it. So I'm good. it so that's what's gonna give us a nice angle um, to weld all of the tops even with a car that has no roof you still should probably be doing this so you can see here I have not welded the tops here it's because they were covered by this area we're gonna be able to get a weld like this on all joints same thing over here so we'll be able to weld all of these Spots. A lot easier. I'll put the cage back, then we'll be able to tag it to the base plates and build the rest of the cage, make sure all of the tubes fit well. We're not going to fully weld the base plates to the chassis until everything is completely done. The reason for that is you might have to break those tacks in order to manipulate the cage to get certain welds. You won't know that until the very end, so it's best to leave those last. So I'm going to keep going. Right now I'm doing the door bars. Um, the trick with the door bar is to make sure you get them in and fit them just in case you might have to pull in the main hoop from the side in order to weld down, down in here. So I'm not going to put in the diagonal because if I put the diagonal in I won't be able to compress the main hoop and I won't be able to get a good weld on that joint. So we're going to throw both door bars in. Uh, we may only have to put in the bottom of the door bar. We'll see how the top one looks, but right now it's just kind of order of operations and making sure that you are able to simulate welding every joint. because when I pull the main hoop over with my ratchet strap, it would probably break the backs off. And I don't want it to do that. I want the backs to stay right where they are. So right now I'm gonna, I'm gonna suck this over so that I can weld right up in there. Oh my goodness, that does it. Super tough. Gonna have to do it again on the other side. Always a challenge. I, I don't know how long that took. It took me a while. Not easy, man. Um, well, one little rotation of the door bar does a lot. I'm trying to get all these fit perfectly. So, I don't know. It's a work in progress. I've been filming. We're filming. Uh, we're not filming anymore. <laughs> The, there's like probably three hours just from today. Looks good. Hi, I'm back working on the Corvette and I have some cool parts that I'm gonna show you guys. Corvettes have a aluminum a pillar. This here is aluminum. So you really don't see a lot of cars having those cool dimple die gussets that join the A pillar to the roll cage. I'll see if you can see the RX-7. There. See? Okay, so those look cool. And I'm going to make the Corvette look cool, but I'm gonna use these. Okay. Design these to fit here. But basically what we're going to be doing is riveting the plates and welding to the cage. So 
I need to dimple dye these, clean them up, put a slight bend in this, maybe 10 degrees to kind of match up with this edge, rivet it in, weld this in, and I need to make my own dash bar that goes across and goes above this so that um, I can push this out just a little bit so it's almost touching here. That way, I get the cage fitting just as tightly as I want it to all the way down the A-pillar. The dash bar that comes with the cage kit goes in front of the factory pedal box. You won't be able to take it out if you weld that in. So I'm gonna weld one in that I make myself and it's gonna go above that and it gives me the fit and finish that I want for the cage. Tubes are flexible, so that's why I'm doing it. And I'm gonna make these gussets and it's gonna look sick. It's gonna be the only Corvette that has these that I'm aware of and I'm excited to do it. I love little details like this. It really pops, it really makes the car stand out. Everything that's gonna happen with this car is gonna be standing out. We got air jacks coming, we got all kinds of cool stuff and I've been working on all of it. So as these videos start rolling out, you are going to see a lot of really cool content that's already been done. I'm probably, when you see this video, I'm probably two to three weeks ahead of this video. So. You might see glimpses on Instagram of what I'm actually doing in that time, but you know, it's all the more reason to keep in the loop and watch these videos. Okay, here they are. Not bent or anything, not dimple dyed. So we're gonna come over here. We've got this fancy press to do the dimple dyes in. Can't find the hole, there it is. Bam, that's it. So they're gonna look something like this, okay. And it's gonna go something like, something like that. So now let's make this tube. Okay, so a little update. I am putting, because I'm welding in the dash bar, I need to fit my steering column and make sure all the heights and everything are good. So basically Rob designed his, this bar, this touches the tunnel and this cope goes right on top of this door bar. But I'm not gonna be doing that. I'm gonna be running this higher, kind of where it is. The reason is my transmission sticks up through this hole and it's just gonna hit the tube where he wanted it. So I also wanted it higher so it's easier for me to remove this factory pedal box. So this is the factory pedal box and I just cut this off, it was here, now it's not. This is now not gonna hit the tube so I'm gonna fit this in the car. Okay, so a quick overview of the roll cage now that I have it complete. I MIG welded the base plates to the chassis. The reason I do this is because it's just hard to get the painted frame where you do clean it up, but then it's still painted in behind. It's thinner metal. It's just difficult to TIG weld. There's usually some gaps which are favorable for MIG welding, but then when you're TIG welding, you don't really want those gaps. So the base plates are MIG welded in. Um, I did TIG the back just because uh, it's, it was nice flat plane. It was actually kind of difficult because it bakes the paint and the stuff that's underneath and all the stuff that GM does to prevent it from rusting kind of comes out in the weld. So I did it, but it was still kind of rough. Would have been better if I made that. Um, we finished putting the dash bar in. I welded these nuts inside of the steering column, uh, made all the connections there. That, we'll probably cover that in more detail in the following videos. We installed the intrusion plates from cage kits. Uh, this is how the, the cage works. Because it's a frame railed chassis, this is all you have to do for the intrusion bars right over there. You can see that plate there. We put in the gussets, so we ended up riveting the gussets to the aluminum A-pillars. We'll probably add more rivets than this, uh, but the reason we did that is because the cage is steel Eight pillars are aluminum. 90% of the reason for this is because it looks sick. Um, it will prevent the A pillar from, you know, flexing separate from the roll cage, but it really isn't gonna do a whole lot other than that. So aesthetically is the big points. Chassis rigidity, it might be a percent or two, but that's fine. I wanted it mostly for looks, so we're good. Uh, the next videos to follow are gonna be covering a lot of really cool stuff. An idea would be like the front steering rack, angle kit, the rear grip kit. You can actually take a peek at the knuckles there sitting on the fiberglass floor, just to give you an idea. We even have our air jack mounts just kind of roughly sitting here. 
Um, so this is where these are gonna go. They're a direct weld in. We weld the two pieces together and it only fits on the frame rail in one spot. Um, so these are gonna be really cool to install. The air jacks are just gonna slide right in as if the car came factory with mounts for them. And the car will be, you know, pegging itself up on four posts. It's gonna be fantastic. We're gonna be cutting off the front, making bash bars there. We're gonna be doing some bash bars in the rear. Ton of stuff. And we're doing everything with a purpose. Uh, and I usually tell you what the purpose is and why I'm doing it. We also need to install a product that we have completed. Firewall block off plates. Basically there's like 11 holes in the front of this firewall. We made a product that blocks all of them off. And I finished designing my firewall that fits in here. I have a nice window cutout with FDF in it and it's gonna have a Lexan insert so I'll still be able to use my rear view and look out the back. It's gonna be great. You guys are gonna love it. This is the end of the roll cage section. We'll see you guys on the next episode.